good afternoon uh, this this video is intended to go over the operation use uh, of this Eagle air system that uh, the department just purchased for filling SCBA bottles at the scene uh, this unit was or is taking the place of air 32 it is the old sterling FMO unit that's com been converted to have a flatbed on it and we put the bottles off of old air 32 onto this unit in conjunction with this new uh, fill station from Eagle Air. This is a cascade system. This is not a compressor. So it doesn't, this will not fill the bottles on there. It's just going to take the bottles from the big storage units into the, the cylinders that we use on our, on our packs. Uh, this was done to uh, make better use of our resources. This, obviously the starting hadn't been used in several years. So we came up with a plan to use it and make it an air truck. It's a more reliable unit than the old 1984 Chevy that we had as a Air 32. So that's the reason that we've transitioned. And then we also added more capabilities with this fill station. Uh, now we're able to fill two bottles at the same time, whereas before we were only being uh, able to fill one ball at a time. So I'm going to kind of just go over some real brief uh, overviews of the use and some of the, the things that are going to be different from the old Air 32. And I think the biggest the biggest uh, change from the old Cascade system, it's still the same bottles, still the same amount of bottles that we had on Air 32. It's just the way that they're plumbed into this fill station. Uh, Air 32 had nine bottles Cascade system. Uh, what we've done is we've combined those into uh, four banks. So what we've done is we've tied two of the bottles into one and it goes into uh, each bank. So if you look up here it starts from the left and moves to the right. Bank one, two, three, and four. So with each bank there's two of the big bottles that are hooked up together to combine to make one bank. Um, the other nice thing about it is you no longer have to open the bottles themselves. Everything's pre-plumbed and all the bottles are opened. Everything is done through this fill station um, where in regards to filling bottles or filling the whole system uh, altogether. So if you want to go around the back here, we'll show you what I mean. So if you look at number five and number six, these numbers don't mean anything anymore to us, but those two bottles are hooked up uh, together. So they're, they're tied in tandem and it's plumbed in over here to create bank one. And the same thing goes on for the other eight bottles. If you look on the very bottom on the passenger side, there's one bottle that it's not in the system. Um, that was left out of the system just because we found out that when we were doing the install on this that the the valve was bad so we we just plumbed it out of the system it's not in there anymore uh it doesn't serve any purpose other than to provide stability for the rest of the bottles moving back to the front of the of the fill station i'm going to kind of go over the components of the fill station so i've already talked about the the banks here if you look up here in the very uh top left corner uh, you'll see a light button so it has a light to eliminate your valves and your knobs when you're for nighttime operation. Um, so all your work is going to be done mostly out of these these four valves here. Uh, it's already preset to 4,500 psi the the regulator, and that's this one here. And if you want to adjust it if for whatever reason, if we're mutilating another department that it runs a different pressure than we do, then you can adjust that here. And all it is is a simple push in to activate it and then clockwise counterclockwise or clockwise to increase the pressure and counterclockwise to decrease the pressure and it's nice because once you let it go it de deactivates that valve and you can turn it and doesn't mess with it at all um, this is where you're gonna once you open your your whatever bank you're using you're going to follow these arrows and it's going to come over here. You'll see the pressure inlet going through before it goes to the regulator and then after it goes to the regulator, it's at 4,500. Then you go over here and once you can fill your, or once you hook up your bottle, you'll see this pressure 
uh, that's your bottle pressure. So whenever you're filling, you'll start to see that pressure come up and you won't, obviously if they're one of our bottles, you're gonna fill it up to 4,500 PSI and stop there. I'll go over this in more detail later on. Uh, this, is, this right here is an auxiliary port. We will not be using this. This is just there in case in the future we do decide to do something for uh, remote uh, stuff for confined space or stuff like that. This is not to fill or anything like that. The other thing that you guys are going to be using, probably not as much, but occasionally is this port, port right here. This is the inlet. So when you take this unit to one of the stations that has the compressor to fill the, the cascade system, which is 30, 33 or station 40, this is where you're going to hook up that, that little pigtail line into here. The nice thing about this is that once you hook up in here, all you have to do is come over here and turn this valve on and it'll fill all eight bottles at the same time. And, uh, you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to touch any of the bottles in the back. You just open this and it'll fill all the bottles at the same time at the same rate. Once it's done, um, bottles will stop filling at 6,000 PSI. Close this valve and then you just unplug here, put the cord reel back into the into the housing and the compressor and you're good to go. Your bottles should all be reading 6,000 PSI. So that's your, your filling process to fill the cascade system. One of the other key components of this is the fill station. I talked about that a little bit earlier. This is all air actuated stuff, so you have to have air in the system in order to be able to operate this, this system. So the nice thing is you just flip this up, it's air actuated, air assisted, and it opens it up. As you can see, you have two slots to fill two bottles at the same time. Uh, and it doesn't matter where, which one, if you want to fill one bottle at the same time, it doesn't matter which one, what slot you put it in. What matters is what connection you make to the bottle. So I'll demonstrate how to hook up a bottle and then the filling process. Put your bottle in there, the containment cylinder. Line up your threads here. Tighten this down. Make sure your valve is open. This one, you can see, clockwise is closed, counterclockwise is open. This one, since we're not using it, we're gonna make sure that it is closed. Uh, if you're gonna fill both bottles at the same time, then all you have to do is make sure that these are open if you have two bottles. If you're filling one, then you have to make sure that the other valve is closed. Open your bottle all the way like you normally would to fill it at the station. And then you're just gonna use the handle close it and if you see that like I said this is all air actuated so you want to keep your your fingers and your hands away from this point right here because that'll create a pinch point and do some damage to your hands this is telling me immediately that I have about 1200 psi in that bottle so I'm gonna look at my cascade system they're all well this bank 3 is the lower has the least amount of air pressure out of all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that one because we wanna fill that that bottle as close to this as possible without going over. So I'm gonna make sure that they're all closed. Except for this one, because it's got the least amount. And I'm gonna just open this one Open it up all the way, and you're going to follow the arrows here. It's got 4,300 PSI. That's what my regulator is set at, 4,500. So now I'll go over here to fill. And just like you're, you would fill at the stations, not, not too fast. You don't, want to, you don't want them to create a lot of heat. So you'll see that your bottle pressure is approaching 4,000 PSI. We've got about 2,000 before we equalize between cask. Uh, bank three and the fill bottle. So we're about there. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, shut shut the 
this bank off. And you can hear it stopped filling. So we'll go to the next one that, the next highest le level. So this one's got 44, this one's four, this one's about six, and that one's about 43. So we'll start from this one next. Just open it up and just let it fill from there. If we didn't have enough in bank one to fill the rest of this, then we would go on to the next highest pressure uh, bank to, to work from. So if we were using this one, we already know this one's below the pressure that we're at. So we would either go to this one or this one. Uh, ideally, you'd go to this one, but since they're so close to each other, you're not going to do much of anything. So you go to the next one. And all you have to do is just close this one to the left and if you're not sure which way is open or closed it says it on the on the valve itself there and now it's topped off so we're going to go in and close this valve we don't have to touch anything else here and then we're going to open this and here we're not going to even mess with this valve we're just going to shut the bottle off close the valve on the bottle all the way and then we're going to go back over here to the vent and it's going to it's going to vent the pressure that's remaining from this valve to the bottle once that's been completely vented then you can come and disconnect your bottle and your bottle's full and then you can proceed to fill additional bottles if you need. Uh, if you don't need it, then like I said, you don't even have to mess with these valves. Just close it. Remember to keep your hands clear from this area. Close your vent. Make sure this is closed. And then if you're done with it, then you want to close all these banks. For when you're uh, starting from scratch again you have um, a fresh start thank you and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to call uh, logistics myself or Alex and we'll try to get you the answers thank you and have a good afternoon